Framework sent me this laptop to review, but they didn't get any editorial input, nor did they receive a preview of this video. To learn more about my review process, visit heavyelement.com ethics. Now, I don't often review laptops, but when I do, gaming is always my first consideration. Video games are a huge part of my life, and I am always looking for new ways to play. But another thing that I care deeply about is repairability and sustainability. That's why the Framework Laptop 13 is such a big deal to me. It's running my favorite games at great frame rates, it has a high resolution screen, and I get to put it together myself. But will I end up replacing my Steam Deck as my primary gaming machine with this guy? There's only one way for you to find out. Stay tuned to the end of the video. All right, first, let's review the specs. My Framework 13 is kitted out with a Ryzen 7 7840U CPU with integrated Radeon 780M graphics. It has a total of 16 gigabytes of DDR5 memory at 5,600 mega transfers a second, and that's two eight gigabyte sticks. Now for storage, we have a 500 gigabyte NVMe SSD. And those are the broad specs, but there's a lot more that we can talk about when it comes to the Framework Laptop 13's hardware and software. First up, just look at this thing. I mean, it's beautiful. The aluminum finish, the slightly mirrored logo on the lid that I believe is a genius design as it's always right way up for both the user and observers, unlike some other companies that are not focused on the user. Now this device is super thin, but the chamfers on the lower chassis give the impression of an ultra slim laptop, which is nice. There's a real premium feel here too. And right there should be. I mean, this particular model without tax or without shipping is about 1500 bucks. Now, the cool thing about this is that I actually put this thing together myself. This could be a pro or con, depending on how you feel about stuff like this. But for me, it's definitely a benefit. Now, this device came in multiple pieces and it was up to me to assemble it. I had an absolute blast putting this thing together. And honestly, I think this would be a great project for you to do with a seven or eight year old kid. Everything is clearly labeled inside the chassis when you go to start doing this, but the uh, instructions that they provide are also well documented and the process is very straightforward. So let's talk about the screen. It's a 13.5 inch 3x2 matte display at 2.5K resolution. That's 2880 by 1920. It's got a peak brightness of over 500 nits and it has a 120 hertz refresh rate. And it also has an anti-glare surface. And peak brightness is one thing, but what about the lowest brightness setting? This is something that's really important to me. In low light conditions, the lowest brightness setting on this device is actually very comfortable. This is compared to most of the other laptops in my collection, which are often at least slightly, if not painfully too bright at their lowest setting. So I really appreciate this. Now, I really like this keyboard too. It's not too dissimilar from the Logitech Craft keyboard that I daily drive on my desktop. So. There's no major adjustment or learning curve that I had to adopt here. I especially like the key combo of for adjusting the backlight, hold FN and hit the space bar and it will cycle through the available brightness levels. And again, brightness levels, I got to give it to Frameworks team here. They have sane brightness levels on the, uh, the keyboard and I really like that. Now, before we continue, I want to ask, are you enjoying this video? Are you getting something from it? Why not like that smash button? It's the best way to tell YouTube you want to see more videos just like this. You can also get subscribed to stay up to date with all the fun stuff we're doing here on the channel. I have new videos coming out every Monday and Friday, so get subscribed so you don't miss them. All right, let's get back to the video. The speakers of the Framework 13 offer stereo separation with two watt drivers on either side of the machine. They're kind of downward firing, but they sound pretty good to my ears. Now, when I say pretty good, I'm talking about laptop drivers here. Laptops leave a lot to be desired in most cases. They also get impressively loud. And though they lack a lot in the way of bass, you can still make out pretty much the entire low end and it doesn't get muddied or gross. For connectivity, this machine boasts an AMD RZ616 Wi-Fi 6E adapter with a total throughput of 2.4 gigabits per second. I was able to fully utilize my entire home internet bandwidth with this Wi-Fi card, and I think that's actually pretty impressive. This card also has uh, Bluetooth 5.2 support, which is really neat and comes in handy a lot of the time. The Framework 13 has a fingerprint reader too, which I didn't discover until I started writing this script. Uh, it's built right into the power button, which actually works on Linux, but uh, I don't think I'm gonna be using that anytime soon. It's a neat feature, but not for me. 
The battery, which is a 61 watt hour cell, lasts on average about two and a half hours, but under certain conditions can get to almost four. This device is ideal for heading to the local coffee shop and working on some code or writing a document. And I've also had this battery last well over 32 hours in sleep mode, which was kind of impressive, actually. Speaking of power, uh, it comes with a 60 watt USB-C power adapter, which is quite handy and entirely modular. And I can't stress enough how much I love this charger because both sides of the adapter can be disconnected. That makes me incredibly happy. I, I can't stand proprietary chargers that are hardwired on the DC side of the brick. It, it absolutely drives me crazy. And this is a USB-C charger, so there's none of the obsolete barrel jack shenanigans going on here. So I do want to mention something I noticed where you, you, know, you, you plug in the USB-C charging cable to the laptop and the battery indicator LED on the laptop will come on. But sometimes the OS just doesn't realize that charging has started. Uh, that's not really an issue, it's just something I've noticed. Now, the integrated graphics are impressive, and I was able to play some of my favorite games at acceptable and even great frame rates in some scenarios. I tested these games at 1080p because that's what my capture setup allows for right now. Now, 1080p is admittedly smaller than the screen's native resolution, but running the games with OBS open in the background cut my frame rate by a third in most uh, instances, so I figured I'd just use my external capture setup that I use for every other video. Anyway, first up in my suite of uh, testing here, I tried Doom Eternal, which is my go-to game, mostly because it's like the most optimized game that's on the market right now. And on high settings, it was absolutely terrific. It hovered around 100 FPS for the majority of my time with it, and uh, I really liked Doom Eternal. I got sucked into it for several more minutes than I was hoping for. Uh, then I tried Halo Infinite, and this is kind of my first time playing Halo Infinite, like with any kind of level of seriousness. Uh, I tried it on medium preset, which was the recommended preset, and it was comfortably above 40 FPS while I got my ass handed to me over and over again. Then I tried Deadlock on the second to the left preset, uh, which was unlabeled and it played at a steady 50 FPS. Dead Space was another title I tried, and this one had some odd quirks that would cause the game to lock up for a moment. I thought that it was like a shader compilation issue, so I tried playing the game for another 20 minutes, and the issue didn't really go away, so I don't really know what was wrong here. Finally, I gave the laptop a proper benchmark with uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and here's the results of that. Now, one of the best features of the DIY framework laptop is that they ship without a Windows install. And look, I don't want Microsoft earning money from my purchase when they sell weak and inferior operating systems that I'm not even going to use anyway. So kudos to Framework for offering an OS free device. And it was awesome to see Framework's website calling out that fact. Not only that, but there are officially supported Linux distributions for their machines, and that warms my heart. It means that the hardware choices they're making are focusing on making sure Linux works on these devices. You love to see it. Fedora 40, Ubuntu 2404, and 2204 are officially supported, and there's a whole page dedicated to community-supported distros as well. Now, Project Bluefin, Bazite, and Arch all get callouts on this page, while Linux Mint and Manjaro's logos appear on the specs page. However, do note that if you order a pre-assembled unit, it will come with Windows pre-installed on it, and there's no way of opting out of that, uh, as far as I can tell on their website. There's also no pre-installation option for Linux. Now, let's talk about the cons, and there really aren't that many to talk about. First, the fans are entirely unnoticeable, and that's a good thing. Until you start playing games with it, and then they ramp up to jet engine status. To their credit though, the machine really doesn't seem to get that hot, which is good. And here's some thermal camera footage to prove it. Now, one of the main selling points of framework devices is their modularity, and there are four expansion card slots here. These are all hot swappable, and my box shipped with a whole suite of them. I opted for two USB-C ports, a Type-A port, and an Ethernet port as my default configuration. I love this idea, especially since any one of the USB-C ports, no matter which slot they end up in, can charge the laptop. Where this becomes a little bit of a stumbling block for me, though, is, well, in my research, I found that the rear left and rear right slots are USB 4 with DisplayPort, 
and that's great. But the front right slot is USB 3.2 with DisplayPort, and the front left slot is only USB 3.2. There's no DisplayPort on the front left port. Now, this is a limitation of the CPU, if I'm not mistaken, as this issue does not exist with the Intel version of the laptop. This isn't a big deal, like I said, but it is something to keep in mind, and it's something you have to remember about this laptop, as none of the ports are marked to show their capabilities, as far as I can tell. Another small issue I have is that there's a bit of a lack of rigidity in the lower chassis, and this can be a problem when the device isn't situated on a flat surface. For example, if I put this laptop on my lap, its namesake, right, and uh, it's not resting level, then the trackpad can become impossible to physically click. And I disable the software touch to click because that drives me crazy. When the chassis isn't perfectly level, it's almost like the trackpad button is permanently pressed and that can be a bit of an issue. I almost forgot to mention the webcam and the built-in microphones. Uh, keep in mind that I'm trying to give this the best possible chance. I've tried using my studio lights, I've tried using my ring light uh, and nothing looks very good. I can try turning on my ring light again and you can see no, no, it doesn't. There's not a lot you can do with this webcam, but it's, you know, it'll suffice. It'll suffice. <laughs> Hopefully the audio sounds pretty good anyway. So yeah, that's the Ryzen powered framework laptop 13 DIY edition. Despite a few small issues, this laptop is incredible. I highly recommend it. It has become my daily driver laptop, and I am extremely excited to see what comes next from framework in the future. And while I love this laptop, I don't think I'm gonna replace my Steam Deck with it quite yet. I would love to see Framework come out with a gaming focused device that has the same kind of modularity, uh, but with the form factor of something like the deck. That would be incredible and I'd love to see that. That's going to do it for this video. If you believe in the work that I'm doing here, you can help this show and get your name listed over here in the credits with a monthly contribution over on Patreon or by becoming a YouTube member. There are links below to both of those. With that said, my name is Gardner. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.